Hello Space Cats and welcome back to my channel. Last week NASA posted this amazing image of the Aurora Beauty and the Beast as part of their astronomy picture of the day. Hang on a second, that's not the right photo. Aurora Beauty and the Beast after the spectacular beauty of the Aurora paired with the dangers of the mechanism creating it. But before we go into that, let me talk about magnetic fields. The Earth has a magnetic field which is so large it reaches outer space. It's generated deep within the core of the Earth, where the temperatures can be as hot as the surface temperature of the Sun. Here, the outer core is made of a liquid iron, which flows over the inner core which is made of a solid iron. This flow generates electrical currents which in turn generates a magnetic field. The magnetic field lines are concentrated at the north and south poles, so this is where the magnetic field strength is the strongest. But these magnetic poles are not the same as our geographical north and south poles. No, the magnetic poles are in fact moving. The north magnetic pole is slowly moving towards Russia. Back in 1980, this was moving at a speed of about 6 miles per year, which is equivalent to the height of Mount Everest. However, more recently, in the last two decades or so, we've seen it accelerate. It's been moving five times this speed now. The Earth's magnetic field acts like a shield. It protects us from solar wind and other radiation that would otherwise strip away our atmosphere and cause damage to life on Earth. The charged particles in the solar wind are accelerated along the magnetic field lines into the poles. In doing so, these charged particles, which are mostly electrons, smash into gas molecules in the upper atmosphere, and they give up some of their energy. When the molecules release this energy, it creates beautiful displays of light, which we call aurora. Collisions of different gas molecules create different colors of aurora. Oxygen makes it glow green, or sometimes red, and collisions with nitrogen make it glow blue or sometimes purple. When aurora are really bright, they can saturate our eyes and this makes them appear white. In fact, about a quarter of people will only see white aurora. Normally, three things are required to generate aurora. Firstly, is an atmosphere, secondly, a magnetic field, and thirdly, are particles moving along magnetic field lines. These particles generally come from the sun through the form of solar wind. But occasionally, when magnetic field lines on the sun cross over, get tangled up and reorganize themselves, it can release a huge amount of energy, known as a solar flare. These solar flares release huge amounts of particles and hence radiation into space. And when the sun's activity is high, you'll get a lot of these solar flares. This means that aurora here on Earth will be very bright and very beautiful. However, it can also interfere with our radio telecommunications here on Earth. And that's exactly what happened in 1859. During an event known as the Carrington event, the solar wind was so powerful it violently compressed Earth's magnetic field. And this generated huge electrical currents which traveled along telegraph wires. These telegraph wires then sparked up and gave telegraph operators electrical shock. There is only so much that the Earth's magnetic field can protect us from. If we were to have a big solar flare today, it could wipe out technology. We would have big consequences for navigation and things like the compasses within our phones, within boats and airplanes, and even our 4G data could go down. But thankfully, there are measures in place to protect the Earth if such a huge solar flare were to occur. Space satellites, such as ESA and NASA's SOHO mission, are studying the Sun, and ESA's mission cluster is studying the solar wind so that we can predict when a solar flare will happen. This will give us advanced warning so that we can turn off electronic devices in space so that they aren't damaged if such a solar flare were to occur. Both Jupiter and Saturn have magnetic fields and aurora. The aurora on Saturn are very similar to that of Earth, but Jupiter's is quite different. 
We know this because on Earth, the aurora are related to the strength of the solar wind, but on Jupiter, it's pretty much always constant. Jupiter's moon Io has a lot of volcanic activity. It's extremely violent, spewing out oxygen and sulfur from hundreds of volcanoes across its surface. The atoms and electrons from these volcanoes are accelerated along the magnetic field lines into the poles, creating aurora that are beautiful from all kinds of wavelengths, from infrared to X-ray. Aurora have also been observed on Venus and Mars, but hang on a second, Venus and Mars don't have magnetic fields. They do, however, have atmospheres. On Venus, the atmosphere is able to capture the sun's magnetic field, and moving particles on this captured magnetic field can crash into Venus's atmosphere, creating beautiful aurora. On Mars, the aurora are created by neutral hydrogen atoms. This neutral hydrogen is created from solar wind protons that capture electrons in a huge cloud of hydrogen surrounding the planet. This neutral hydrogen is traveling really fast through the Martian atmosphere and is unaffected by any captured magnetic fields. Which aurora did you like best? Is there any aurora on other planets and moons that I missed out? Let me know in the comment section below. And as always, if you like this video, make sure you like, share, and subscribe.